Okay, good morning. This is Denise Bechtel. I'm the team lead for energy and environment with Pentap. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody and thank you for joining us today. I know that we're all very busy. Um, so this is the North Central Pennsylvania Energy Efficiency Roundtable, Community Resources for Your Facility Projects and Upgrades webinar. Um, once again, thank you for joining us. I just have a few quick items of business to cover before we get started. If you have any technical difficulties um, accessing or hearing the presentation, use the chat pad and we'll try to correct them promptly for you. Um, this presentation is going to last approximately 50 minutes and then we'll follow up with a Q&A period afterwards. We'll wait to answer any of your questions that you have until that time to allow us to move through the you know, material um, efficiently. And this webinar is being recorded and will be loaded on the Pentap website in a few days, okay? You'll receive a follow-up email notifying you when that link is available. We also will be surveying you folks um, when we send out that email. Uh, we would really be interested and appreciate you uh, filling out that survey. We really wanna find out your interest in our future uh, web webinars and workshops. So we can provide you with the topics that interest you and that can benefit you and your companies and your facilities. Okay, so please, please fill out those surveys. So moving forward, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the North Central Roundtable. What is our mission and what would we like to accomplish with the Roundtable webinars and future workshops? The mission of the group is to provide assistance to Pennsylvania non-residential customers and reduce energy costs through improved energy management, energy efficiency, um, and cutting edge technology. The round table is planning to provide a forum for customers through two or three events per year to share information and attract experts on various energy topics from energy efficient technologies to energy management strategies. Um, the counties that we serve in our roundtable include Cameron, Center, Clarion, Clearfield, Clinton, Elk, Forest, Jefferson, Lycoming, McKean, Potter, Tioga, Union, and Venango. Our hope is to be able to do in-person workshops in the future to give us all a chance to network with each other, discuss issues. Um, for example, you know, those questions of what keeps us up at night. How can we improve on business practices and become more sustainable in our ever-changing climate? Um, for example, COVID. <laughs> or learn about energy efficiency ways to improve our bottom line. So to welcome um, you all to our first roundtable event, this slide provides you with information on our participating members. Um, and then later in the presentation, we'll provide you with our members' contact information so you can reach out to any of them if you have questions or need assistance in the future. So our presenters for today, <clears throat> um, I'd like you, uh, we'll do just a quick introdu uh, introduction, excuse me, I'll do a quick introduction of myself. First, I'm Denise Bechtel. I'm the team lead for energy and environment for Pentel. I oversee the programs and the personnel responsible for offering energy efficiency and pollution prevention assistance to small and mid-sized companies of all sectors through Pennsylvania. I have almost 20 years um, experience. I've been performing uh, more than 250 on-site assessments to help companies reduce their energy consumption, decrease pollution and related costs, improve environmental compliance and decrease um, greenhouse gas emissions. You can find more information about me on the Pentap website. I would though like to introduce the presenters we have in order um, in the way they'll be speaking today. Each presenter will talk about their areas of expertise and what their programs are all about um, and how they can help your company or organization. Once I discuss uh, the services by, offered by Pentap, we'll have Michelle Ferguson from the Department of Environmental Protection representing information on behalf of DEP. Then we have Doug Good presenting for the First Energy Corporation. After Doug, 
Tom Weibel will tell us all about the Northwest Industrial Resource Center and what they can offer to the community. Next then will be Russ Lawrence from the Innovation Manufacturer Center. And then to close us out today, we have Barry Mays from the North Central Regional Planning Commission. We do have a lot of information to provide to you, so why don't we get started? <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you a little bit about PEMTAP. We are a statewide technical assistance organization charged with supporting Pennsylvania businesses and anchor institutions. Those include manufacturers, municipalities, educational institutions, entrepreneurs, and economic development agencies. We began uh, PENTAP over 50 years ago as one of the first technical assistance programs in the country. We're kind of proud of that. You can find us at pentap.psu.edu. PENTAP has a diverse staff with backgrounds in chemical engineering, electrical engineering, and environmental science. Our staff includes a certified energy auditor, certified energy manager, renewable energy professional, and a Sigma-6 green belt. We also have several Penn Step graduate students that assist us with our assessments and utilize the knowledge they are gaining in the classroom to bring new ideas to our clients. We work closely with our clients to understand their needs. We provide technical assistance as well as make the appropriate connections to resource partners within the university and to our Pennsylvania resource partners located throughout the state, as you will hear through the rest of the presentation today. PENTAP staff are located in Pittsburgh, Erie, and University Park. We do have a new open uh, position in Eastern Pennsylvania. <clears throat> Our services are offered statewide. Um, we do engage with businesses to improve their operations and drive innovation. Our energy efficiency technical advisors provide direct assistance to companies to identify those opportunities where um, that include energy consumption and pollution and how we can reduce that um, at their facility. The energy and environment technical advisors perform uh, pollution prevention, energy assistance, uh, assessments, also known as our P2E2 assessments, where we can help um, businesses to decrease pollution and increase energy efficiency at their sites. The E3 assessments build on the E2 assessment by incorporating lean manufacturing into that process. Our energy management systems, um, ENMS, will provide a company with the framework to integrate energy efficiency into an existing management system. And then we have building retuning that offers those involved in the building operations, a low cost approach to energy efficiency. We offer opportunities to Penn State students in the College of Engineering to gain real world experience by having them assist us with our energy audits. And again, we go beyond energy as we also work closely with our clients to understand their needs as we match them to additional resources within the university and across the state. On the innovation side, our innovation advisors provide technical and entrepreneurial assistance to companies to aid in product development. We also assist ways to assist entrepreneurs and companies with resources to help them grow their businesses. We connect companies with the faculties, the students, laboratories, and the infrastructure here at Penn State University as well as those within um, the state network of our economic development partners. The innovation technical advisors assist entrepreneurs to and strive to connect them to the resources, many of them available to them at Penn State through the EDA University Center and Engage, as well as to our statewide resource partners. Innovation also brings company to Penn State's Learning Factory um, that's an engineering capstone course. Any company sponsoring a project at the Learning Factory is assigned a team of up to five Penn State students with various engineering backgrounds to work on your project. Previous sponsors include large corporations, small manufacturers, and even startups. So some of our past learning um, factory projects have included everything from developing lightweight surgical lead vests to 3D printing for replacing those obsolete parts that you cannot get. Um, our innovation advisors also connect companies to capstone courses within other colleges here at Penn State 
such as the College of Ag Sciences. They have a food innovation and product design capstone course. A company will work with a group of students to develop a product or complete a product of a sponsor's choice. A student or these students will work to complete a prototype, which can include tasting and focus group testing, and then provide a presentation for the sponsor about those results. Innovation also helps student entrepreneurs with their first steps in pitching their business ideas and procuring funding. Um, in 2022, or sorry, 2020, our impact, we've helped 105 companies in 36 counties throughout Pennsylvania to save a total of $2.5 million. We've also helped to create or save 29 jobs. Here's my contact information and um, Next, I would like to introduce Michelle Ferguson from DEP, and she's going to talk about the services that they have to offer. Michelle? Thank you, Denise, and thank you everyone for tuning in. My name is Michelle Ferguson. I work with DEP's Energy Programs Office. I've been in that office for about nine years, and prior to that, I was a solid waste inspector and recycling coordinator for DEP. Uh, next slide. The Energy Programs Office within DEP is Pennsylvania's state energy office. Every state has a state energy office. Um, Pennsylvania's happens to be, how, be housed within DEP. Our mission statement, we support energy policies and programs that prevent pollution, protect our environment, improve public health, and ensure access to affordable energy options for all Pennsylvanians. Um, we do that through an approach that focuses on energy efficiency, advanced energy technologies, education and outreach, climate change, and energy resiliency. Next slide, please. Um, I just wanted to give you a flavor for the kinds of initiatives that we do and the different programs that we have. The way that we do this each year, we get grant funding from the United States Department of Energy. And then we use that funding for a variety of initiatives. I can't stress enough the partnerships that DEP has with some of the other presenters here today and some other organizations. Without our partners, we wouldn't be able to achieve our goals um, and run so many different programs. Um, Denise just talked to you a little bit about the industrial energy assessments that they're able to provide. We've been able to provide some funding to them to do assessments for small to mid-sized manufacturers. Um, we also provide funding to ETAC which is the Emerging Technologies Application Center at Northampton Community College. Um, we have provided funding for building operator certification training for facility managers. That program's run through the Clean Energy Center at Penn College. Um, right now, we're providing funding for a shared energy manager program for local governments, which has been very positive, getting a lot of good feedback from that program. Um, local government climate action plan development assistance. We've also funded building energy codes trainings for commercial and residential codes in partnership with the Pennsylvania Municipal League. Um, we're currently doing wastewater treatment plant energy efficiency training in partnership with PA Rural Water Association. And a program that I'm heavily involved with and managing is agriculture energy efficiency outreach. And that's in partnership with Penn State Extension. So we're in the middle of a webinar series for that sector right now. So kind of the, the programs we work on are kind of all over the place where there's a lot going on right now. Um, next slide. 
I just wanted to draw your attention to a couple different reports that we've done recently. Um, and these are available on the DEP website, both the full reports and also some nice little booklets that give a really nice summary of the reports. Um, the first would be Pennsylvania's Climate Action Plan which provides strategies for reducing climate change. And we are required by law, we being DEP and our program have to update this plan every three years per legislation. So the 2021 update will probably come out sometime next year. Um, another, I think interesting plan to take a look at is Pennsylvania's solar future plan, um, which sets a target of 10% electricity from in-state solar by the year 2030. And right now, the Pennsylvania in-state solar generation is only about half a percent. So we have a ways to go, go to meet that goal um, just yesterday, Governor Tom Wolf announced a major clean energy initiative that will produce nearly 50% of state government's electricity through seven new solar energy arrays, totaling 191 megawatts. Um, those are going to be constructed around the state, and that's big news. So that announcement just came out yesterday. Um, Next slide, please. We also just recently released the Pennsylvania Electric Vehicle Roadmap, and that provides some kind of how good we're doing and what we need to do to increase the adoption of electric vehicles in the state and improve infrastructure for charging those electric vehicles. Um, we have a lot of kind of studies and assessments that are in the works. There's some that will be coming out soon. Those include a Pennsylvania energy storage report, a clean energy jobs gap analysis, um, as we look to you know, work on workforce development in the state, a food waste to energy assessment for Pennsylvania, which um, has a large focus on the use of digesters for food waste generated in state. And then you may have heard about REGI, which is the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative. And um, DEP's been charged with developing a rulemaking for REGI and spending plans. So that's something our, our office is a bit involved with, as well as our air quality program at DEP. Um, there's just, there's a lot of different things going on. I mean, probably the number one thing that I can help assist people with is if you're interested in doing an energy project, um, incentives. I get a lot of questions about what types of funding and their incentives are available and um, as an office, we keep tabs on, you know, state funding, federal funding. So that's something that you can always feel free to reach out to me about. Um, I wanted to draw your attention to two different programs that we work on in our office, um, along with our small business ombudsman office. The first is our alternative fuels incentive grants. Those are for um, alternative fuel vehicles, as well as the fueling infrastructure that's needed to fuel or charge those vehicles. It's a competitive grant, and it is for businesses or nonprofits. And that program should be reopening sometime this spring. Um, the second program that I wanted to make you aware of is our Small Business Advantage Grant Program. That program is um, open to small businesses with less than 100 employees. It provides 50% cost share grants up to $7,000. And it's for both pollution prevention 
and energy efficiency projects. That program, um, currently all of the funding has been exhausted for this fiscal year, but it will open again late July and we have $1 million available annually in that program. Next slide. Um, that's it and that's my contact information. Um, feel free to reach out to me at any time if there's something I might be able to assist you with or if you have questions on incentives that are available. And with that, I would like to introduce Doug Good, our next presenter. Okay, great. Thank you, Michelle. Appreciate that. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. My name is Doug Good. I'm a program manager for First Energies Act 129 program in Pennsylvania. And I just wanna take this time to thank PENTAP for uh, allowing us to introduce ourselves on their webinar. Uh, and also I wanna take a few moments just to talk to you about First Energies Act 129 program. Information on the Act 129 program, as you can see from the slide, can be found at energysavepa-business.com. And there you can find the most updated information on our homepage with program announcements, timelines for the programs. You can also find information on some of the programs being offered. Uh, we have prescriptive lighting, HVAC, food service, agricultural, we even evaluate custom energy efficiency projects. And the guidelines for each of these programs is listed on that website. Also on the website, you will find program allies who are familiar with our program and supportive of the program. There are also funding sources that are offered on that website, as well as frequently asked questions and the forms we use in the programs. And in addition to all this, this is our application portal where you will register, create an account and enter your program, your projects. You'll submit all your paperwork through the application portal on this uh, particular website. Uh, this program is offered in four of our operational companies that serve First Energy across Pennsylvania. We have MedEd, Metropolitan Edison, Penelec, West Penn Power, and Penn Power. So if you are a customer in any of these territories and have an active non-residential account, you are very likely eligible for the program and can submit a project. FE's program is implemented by First Energy's phase three program conservation service provider, clear result. Our conservation service provider is the implementer of our program. They contract with us. They are currently our phase three implementer. Currently, we are in the last year of Pennsylvania's Act 129 phase three program. And it's a five-year program, which began on June 1st, 2016, and will end on May 31st, 2021. So it's in a little over two months. And so right now we are in our wind down process for phase three. However, there is a phase four. The commission, the Public Utility Commission, has authorized a phase four program of the state's Act 129 program, and that will also be a five-year program, and it begins on June 1st, 2021, and will run until May 31st, 2026. Um, next slide, please. Again, as I said earlier, project applications can be made through the portal on First Energy's website, which was relaunched on September 11th, 2020. To assist anyone in making an application, we have a recorded webinar on the website, or you can call Clear Results Call Center at 855-801-5803 or email them at energysave at clearresult.com. As I said earlier, phase three of the program is ending on May 31st. And currently we have lighting incentives of two and a half cents per kilowatt hour. And we also still have a 180 day look back in effect until May 31st, 2021, which means 
you can look back if you complete a project within 180 days of May 31st, you can submit that project, but you have to have your application in by May 31st. Phase four of the Pennsylvania Act 129 program has been approved. And as I said earlier, it's a five-year program. It'll run from June 1st, 2021 through May 31st, 2026. However, there's no immediate details available to share about the program as of right now. First Energy's plan to implement the program has been filed with the commission and the PUC is a reviewing it now. And we should hear something uh, very soon from the commission in regard to our program. It's reviewed by them as well as stakeholders, but we expect to hear from them very, very soon. We are also in the process of uh, securing a new CSP for phase four. And that has not been chosen at this time, um, but we hope to have one in place by mid-April. Next slide, please. Okay, and, and this final slide is just contact information for those involved in our program. Um, again, the program was restarted in September 11th, 2020. And Jeff Waller is our area manager for Clear Resolve covering Pennsylvania. And you can see his contact information there. Siraj Sheikh covers our Metropolitan Edison territory. And his information is also available for you there. And myself, I cover Penn Power, West Penn Power and Penelec, and my contact information is also available. Um, again, I would like to thank everybody. We, we're going to answer any questions you might have at the end of the presentation, but for now, I would like to turn it over to Tom Weibel. Thanks, Doug. Uh, my name's Tom Weibel. I'm a strategic business advisor for the Northwest Industrial Resource Center. I work out of our Dubois office and I cover the North Central region to include Jefferson, Clearfield, Elk, Cameron, Potter, and McKean counties. Um, we work with small to medium manufacturers, as we say, to help enhance their competitiveness and assist the company to grow. Next slide, please. The NWIRC has been assisting manufacturers for the past 30 years, uh, as I said, to improve their competitiveness. Um, in 13 counties in the Northwestern region. Our main office is in Erie. We are members of what's called the Manufacturers Extension Program with partners in all 50 states plus Puerto Rico. Uh, we're a public private partnership with a third from the federal government, a third from the state and a third coming from our manufacturing clients. Um, most states have one center, possibly two. Pennsylvania is a little bit of an anomaly. We have seven different centers throughout the uh, different regions of the state. So really anywhere you're located, there's an IRC center in Pennsylvania to assist you. As you can see across the bottom, our team develops and monitors projects with an end goal in mind of growing your company, increasing revenue, saving money through programs such as uh, PenTap, exceeding your customer's expectations and becoming more competitive and how we, how we do that is uh, grow. That is a focus on increasing sales, expanding markets, finding new clients. Um, examples of uh, that type of project might be a strategic planning. And as we can see through this past pandemic, planning uh, needs to come to a forefront. And then lead generation. We also work to improve companies. Uh, we focus that on customer expectations, increasing profitability and efficiencies. Some examples of that type of um, project would be operational excellence programs. We have a very extensive knowledge in lean and all the lean practices, as well as some uh, new groundbreaking problem solving techniques such as Kata. We also uh, lead through Innovate. Uh, we like to stay current on emerging trends and technologies. For example, we do tech scouting, and we have projects where we can assist with new product development. And then of course we have Empower. We empower, we do projects through trying to assist to create a culture of collaboration with companies. Examples of that would be leadership training, um, employee development series, which we offer and um, culture building. 
Of course, uh, one of our claim to fame is our training, and we do that through our learn, and that is developing new leaders through training. And as uh, the pandemic has led to, we can do those trainings, whether it be on site or virtually. We offer a wide variety of training, whether it's supervisory skills, again, um, understanding the culture, working with the, the new millennials or, or any type of employee coming in, and then recover. And we do that through trying to assist and to help reshape and strengthen through our COVID-19 recovery program. Next slide, please. Um, the COVID recovery program was developed last March as the pandemic was um, coming into full swing and shutdowns were occurring. Uh, Susan Heilman of our um, Needville office, along with Still Valley Authority, Stone, Deb Lutz in Erie, and the governor's rapid response team, Bev Rapp, came up with this program because they saw the need that companies were going to be struggling coming out of the pandemic, whether it be uh, for lost sales or growing sales or employee need of employee issues. So they created the COVID recovery program. And as you can see on the slide, the COVID recovery program comes in a few steps. Uh, we start out with a business assessment, which is a overall view of how the company fared going into the pandemic and the shutdowns and how they fared coming out of it. So it, it's an overall, we take a temperature of the company and see how they're doing. We also offer a um, cash flow analysis where um, either the NWIRC, our partners, for example, an SBDC, or mo uh, more in particular, the Steel, uh, Steel Valley Authority, will do a cash flow analysis of the company to, to find out you know, where they're sitting and maybe give them some and help them with financial turnarounds. Um, and then on that, we come up with a tactical action plan. The tactical action plan includes more questioning of the company. It does a mini SWOT analysis of their strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. We help them uh, discuss the ideal customer profile so they can be you know, targeting their marketing and their sales at the correct people. From that tactical action plan, we do a management team debrief with um, members of the upper management, and we go over what you know our thoughts are, what we, we believe could help them, and we come up with action plan so that they have action steps to, um, to address the issues. Through that, we also come up with referrals. Referrals can include and have included Clarion, the SBDCs, not just Clarion, but Clarion is our local one. The SPDCs, Steel Valley Authority, uh, Workforce Solutions has gotten involved in assisting in training plans, uh, WebNet in assisting also with training, uh, along with uh, some very well thought out sales and marketing initiatives that have helped uh, a number of our companies, companies coming through the program, not only to grow their sales, but they've gained market share and they're gaining new clients with jobs added. Last slide, please. This is contact information. Um, on it, you'll see my name. Again, uh, I work out of the Dubois office. Uh, William or Bill Rupert is a, a, a new strategic business advisor um, located, it says Franklin, but he's located in Knox, PA. Um, he will be assisting in some of the uh, Northern counties, particularly McKean. So his contact information is on there. If you have any um, questions that we don't cover today, please feel free to reach out to either one of us and we'll see what we can do. So to close, um, as Doug said, thank you for allowing us to come on. And um, it's, this is um, how I wanna say this. This is a truly a partnership. Our region sees the value of the partnership and we work with each and every one of them to assist the manufacturers any way possible. We all know manufacturing is uh, not only the backbone of our country, but uh, on a closer note, the state, region and community. So thank you, and I will turn it over to Russell Lawrence. Thank you. Hey, Tom, thanks much. Gee, I haven't been called Russell for a while. Um, <laughs> yeah, I go by Russ, but uh, yeah, thanks for having me here. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Innovative Manufacturers Center, better known as IMC. Uh, you can go ahead there, Denise. 
And our mission, uh, as you'll see, we're a similar organization to Tom's, uh, is to support the success of manufacturing in central PA. We work mostly with small, mid-sized manufacturers, but uh, we also have a lot of multinationals that have, um, you know, locations and so forth in our area that we uh, that we work with. You can go ahead, next slide. So just some real quick facts about us. Uh, we're located on Penn College uh, Technologies campus in Williamsport. Um, as Tom mentioned, we're part of a federal uh, Department of Commerce. We're known as a manufacturing extension partner. And those are across the US. Uh, in the, at the uh, state level, we're part of the economic development, uh, economic and community development. And there we're known as an industrial resource center, IRC, and there are seven of us in the state. And we've worked with a, a lot of manufacturers over the years and have relationships um, with, with many companies and we're in factories and facilities every day. Uh, you can see we're right there in the middle of the state. We cover those 12 counties from Lycoming down to Bedford County. Next slide. I, uh, I thought it was worth it to, uh, you know, we have this mission to help manufacturers succeed, but I think the big question is, what do we do? How do we do that? And so a couple of just strategic slides on, on how we work. And, uh, you know, as we see it, uh, it all depends on, you know, what's, what's the uh, business environment that we're all working in? Uh, because, um, you know, that's going to dictate what, what success looks like. And that's really being dictated by three big trends in manufacturing. One is increasing customization and specialization. So customers aren't so much asking as they used to, who can make me this commodity product the cheapest? Uh, much more it's becoming who can design and manufacture a solution uh, that specifically meets my needs. And that's a very favorable trend but it's also got a lot of challenges to it. So that's one thing we, we work with a lot. The other one is the increasing speed of change and, and we're all seeing it. And we're talking about just the, the uh, rapidity of turnover, the, the shorter life cycles of everything, you know, whether it's products and services, uh, knowledge, skills, uh, equipment, technologies, tools that we work with, uh, if it's people itself, materials, uh, methods, everything just changing really, really fast. That's just the nature of, of the environment. And the third one is increasing competition and manufacturers have been dealing with um, global competition for years, but uh, just the, the, uh, the uh, amount of disruption in supply chains and industries that can just come out of anywhere, anytime is, is really at a different level. So that's the environment. And the question gets to be, how, do, how does a manufacturer succeed in that environment and how do we help them succeed in that environment? So next slide. So try to make this real simple. We just get it down to two buckets. Uh, one is top line revenues, uh, your products and services. The other side is bottom line uh, work processes. How efficient, how effective are they? So splitting it like that, you know, what we're seeing on the, the top line is just a lot of traditional uh, top-down um, organizational structures, strategies. Uh, they're just not working these days. I mean, companies just have to be, they have to be faster, uh, more aligned, more collaborative, uh, closer to the customer, closer to the marketplace. Um, and, and understanding the trends that are going on. And, and all of that needs to be able to move up and down through the organization, uh, unlike it really ever has in the past. Uh, and, and we can help companies with those kinds of structures and approaches. The other one is uh, called it systematic innovation, but I'm really saying any company these days, any manufacturer anyhow, just has to have some way of continually reinventing their products and services. And then on the bottom line side, uh, our, our view is you just have to be a continuous improvement enterprise these days. You have to have everybody coming into work, 
doing their job, but also working on improvements every day, all the time. Uh, part of that, you really have to be good at training. And uh, the last thing I got on there, the bullet, is uh, you've got all these emerging manufacturing technologies, Industry 4.0, uh, you know, whether that's automation or robotics, additive manufacturing, data analytics, cybersecurity. So th these are just the things that companies, you have to have a plan for how are you going to uh, get up to speed on those enablers and, and help them uh, help you uh, operate your, your business. So the really simple equation as we see it in this fast changing, more complex, specialized, competitive environment is you got to be able to innovate, reinvent your products and services. You got to be able to improve your processes and have that just build into the way you operate. Any company we see doing that is, is killing it. Uh, so that's kind of the simple formula for manufacturing success. Next slide. So we have a pretty good team. We're a small uh, uh, group, a um, lot of experience um, and, um, and uh, business acumen and a real passion for what we do uh, working with manufacturers that's uh, carrying out what I was just talking about there. Next slide. Yeah, oh, okay. I had a, had a thank you slide on there. It must've gone away. Uh, so anyhow, I'll turn it over to our uh, last speaker then is uh, Barry Mays. Okay, I want to, before I get started, thank everybody, but I'll get started and say welcome. And uh, on behalf of the North Central Pennsylvania Regional Planning and Development Commission, and uh, we're based out of Ridgeway, PA. We cover six counties, uh, same as pretty much Tom just went over. Jefferson, Clearfield, Elk, Cameron, McKeenan, Potter, cover 11% of Pennsylvania. And uh, we were started under the Appalachian Regional Commission. Um, so we've been around for a while. And uh, we'll move on to the next slide, talk about some of the programs. So we have a couple of different programs I'm going to highlight here. And uh, programs under community development, regional, de regional development planning, under the ARC, EDA, economic development. Uh, those have worked with local roads and local infrastructure. Then transportation planning that works with PennDOT and federal highways. LTAP works with local roads program, which is with um, the municipals throughout Pennsylvania. We do have an energy program and a lot of things that we do, we have some opportunities that uh, work with all the partners presented today and other ones that didn't present today. And we try to work as a referral network with those. We do have some opportunities with expertise in a few areas and we can explain those to you but we're going to work as a referral ne network especially for uh, business and industry we also have geographic information systems that works with local governments to map some of the information in the region and community development, regional planning, and that helps with greenways planning and other information. Then we'll go on to the next slide. We also have an enterprise development. We have six programs under there. We have the prep program that we work with 
regional partners. And that is something that we come together quite a bit and work um, with various programs throughout the region, business finance assistant, loan programs, anything that's coming through from the federal uh, state side. And then the export marketing that's for international products, anything you wanna know about uh, dealing with various aspects of international trade. We have people that are certified at the office that can assist you in that. Procurement technical assistance, it's for uh, primarily DOD contract, Department of Defense contracts, government procurement. And if a business is dealing with that, they can work with our office. We have WebNet, PA, workforce training. They work with workforce agencies and local partners and providing on-site or other training that will um, help the workforce within the region. And we also have business retention. We work with partners to go out and talk to business and industry about their needs. Next. If you have any questions regarding North Central, uh, best thing to do is call and somebody, either myself or somebody else, will direct you to somebody that will be able to help you to talk to the person you need to talk to. And with that, um, that's pretty much all I want to give you on North Central, if you want to look up our website, it's www.ncentral.com. Um, you can look at our website. And with that, we're going to move on with moving to the next. Talking about upcoming North Central Energy Efficiency Roundtables. April 27th, 2021, we're um, looking at 11 to 12, and then try and keep it everything there. Compressed air systems, working with um, Air Power USA. Hopefully, they'll be able to provide that one. It'll be a one hour session. And it will we'll have a question and answer towards the end. Then we're going to look at Act 129 funding and other incentives for energy efficiency projects. I think you might, that's May 25th, 11 to 12 again. I think that might be something especially to keep aware of as well. Okay, move on. I just want to thank everybody. Here's member contact information. You can see there's uh, quite a few people that are part of the round table that didn't give a presentation today, but it's all a partnership and that's what we're working towards. So you can go ahead and print those out um, after the session today. So you can see Keystone Energy Efficiency Alliance, PA Wilds, Infinity, Ben Franklin, Chamber of Business and Industry at Center County, 
FDP, Southwest Regional Office, Clear Result, and everyone else. With that, I just want to thank everybody for taking the time out. There's a lot of partners involved. We're hoping to build on that and bring you what you need in the future uh, as we progress through COVID and everything. Um, are there any questions? Today's session was primarily to introduce you to the partnership and get everybody familiar with it and work our way forward and bring you some of the information that as we move forward during these difficult times. <laughs> So uh, thank you, Barry. Um, I do have a question for Michelle. Michelle, this is Denise Bechtel with Pentap. Um, okay. I know that you, you talked about the solar plan. Mm -hmm. um, it, do you, are you aware, is there gonna be any funding available for any solar projects in the future? Um, is there any discussion on the table regarding that with DEP? Um, can you just give us an overview or any insight mm -hmm. on that? Nothing specific at this time. Um, I mean, there's a lot of talk and I guess questions and rumors <laughs> because if the Reggie rulemaking happens, that could be a potential source of funding. And there's also some talk of a federal stimulus package um, that could include some clean energy in it. So nothing definite at this time. Um, I know DCED, our sister agency, has in the past had some solar funding, but there's nothing available right now. Um, best bet for folks doing solar is to look at the tax credits that are available. Um, and those are federal tax credits, the investment tax credits. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, I have another question, um, and this is probably directed more to um, Russ and, and Tom. Can you guys maybe just talk a little bit about some of the common trends in, I, I guess, trends, but maybe more of issues as you're going into the manufacturers, what you guys are seeing? Um, is it more, I know we're all dealing with COVID, so that's the obvious elephant in the room, but um, are you guys seeing issues with workforce or supply demand or you know do you guys want to just make maybe a few comments regarding that and Tom if you want to answer first and then you go Russ uh, second sure yeah we've seen a few trends going when, when, I, when I go in to discuss with them um, uh, the biggest that issues now just do bullet points it's still some supply uh, supply chain issues with um, getting some supplies in, the companies are actually rebounding pretty well, seeing an increase in um, RFQs for products that were previously outside of the United States to bring them back in. Um, lots of companies are growing, but they could grow more if they could, uh, if the supply chain was a little more um, stable or a little more under control. The other part is um, we're seeing lots of people um, requesting help with sales. Um, they find out that they need to move forward or gain some market share or gain some clients, gain some new, and they were you know, going with what they had, basically out of, for lack of better word, status quo. And now they're looking to reach out. So we've had an influx of um, some sales and marketing. And lastly, we've had lots of guys, uh, lots of, I apologize guys, lots of manufacturers reaching out and wanting to have um, IT help, IT help, website rebuild, website rebrand, SEO, and trying to, um, they're taking their time during this pandemic to get themselves uh, uh, out there more on the web, if that helps. Russ? Yeah, 
seeing a lot of the same things, Tom. Uh, well said. Uh, workforce, uh, for sure. You know, you mentioned it, Denise, but the there's just a huge shortage of people wanting to be in manufacturing, first of all, just sheer numbers. And then in, in terms of the skills, because, you know, all, all this industry 4.0 that, that I quickly mentioned uh, and the skills that go with that, there are there. I mean, fabulous opportunities for anybody who wants to develop those skills. And almost every manufacturer I know, I mean, just a huge percentage is hiring and looking for skilled people. And it all ties into a couple of those trends I mentioned real quickly, but you know, as things just change faster and faster and get more customized, companies just having the ability to continuous, continuously reinvent their processes, their products and services. What are those capabilities? How do you do that? How do you get good at, good at it? And again, tying that back into the skills and knowledge to do that. So that's, that's the stuff we need to get great at if we want to own manufacturing in the U.S. Thank you, guys. Um, we appreciate that. Um, we do have a question that came in. And the question is, is there grant money available for solar for Pennsylvania companies? Um, there is the USDA REAP grant that's available if you are located in a rural area in Pennsylvania. And if you go on to um, their uh, website, you can enter in your zip code to find out if you meet that requirement. And REAP does pay for alternative energy projects. So you can apply through that. Um, if you would like, you can send me a, an an email and I can send you detailed information regarding the REAP program, okay? So I hope that I was able to answer that for you. Do we have any other additional questions? Okay, well, um, I wanna thank everybody for joining us. Um, like I said, this webinar is being recorded and you will get a, um, an email following and also with that survey, please fill out the survey so that we know what you guys are thinking and what you're interested in hearing about. Um, the whole purpose of the round table is, you know, to provide you information that is very, you know, um, helpful to you and to help your business grow and succeed and, you know, be sustainable. So that's what we want to do. Um, that's the purpose of the round table. Um, you do have those couple dates, you know, save the date on these webinars that are coming up. Uh, you know, we will be talking about compressed air systems and then what funding will be available through Act 129. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you presenters. We appreciate that information and everybody have a great day. It's beautiful outside. So go outside and enjoy the sun. Thank you. Thanks, Denise.